In this video, I'm going to show you how to find a company's 10K. There are two ways to find a company's 10K. I can either go through the company or I can go through the SEC. Let's start with the company first. Go ahead and open up a web browser and I'll show you how to do that. To find Netflix 10K through the company, I'm going to just Google Netflix investor relations. You can see I've already typed it in a few times, so it's populating here, but just type in Netflix investor relations and click enter. I'll click here where it shows me I'm going to Netflix investor relations. And it should give you a screen that looks like this. I can scroll down and look through their information, but the best place where I can find the filings is either here where it says SEC filings or even at the top under financials and SEC filings. Each company's website is going to look slightly different. So I usually just look for financials or financial statements and then SEC filings. It'll always have that term there, the SEC filings. Here to narrow my search because well, it'll list all of the company's SEC filings. I'm going to change this from all form types to annual filings. And then that should just pull up the 10K. Here we see Netflix has a 10K slash A or a 10K A. That's an amended annual report. I don't want that line item there. I want this one here, just the regular 10K. The amended report is just going to have the amendment in it and not the full annual report. I normally would want to look at both of those together to see what the amendment actually was, but I'm going to go ahead and just pull up the 10K. You can look at the 10K in several different versions. There's a web-based version, there's Excel, Word. I'm going to pull up the PDF version. It's easy enough to search and I can kind of copy and paste things out of it as I need to. Any good 10K, and we can see here that where it says Form 10K, so again that's where the name is coming from. Any good 10K is going to have a table of contents that you can click to navigate the 10K. Since I want to go straight to the financial statements, I'm going to click this item 8 here for the financials. And I can just scroll down. It'll be a few pages down here. Here's another table of contents where I can go directly to each of the financial statements, or I could just scroll through them. We'll look at the income statement or statement of operations in a little bit. There is a statement of comprehensive income, which we won't cover in these modules, but you might in some of your classes. Here's a statement of cash flows. Again, we won't cover this in the module, but you will cover this in your accounting classes. And then here's the balance sheet, and this is what we've been looking at. After the balance sheet is a statement of stockholders' equity. Again, we're going to get to stockholders' equity in more detail in just a little bit. Here is the notes on the financial statements. They always follow the actual financial statements. So these are useful in finding out the accounting treatment that companies use. In this case, if you remember, we said we wanted to know what this current content liability meant. Where I can find that is actually in the notes to the financial statements where we were in the 10K. I could scroll through these and just read through them, but it is a lot. Um, the 10K is a very big report. You can see here it's about 82 pages. So I'm not going to scroll through each of those pages. Instead, I'm just going to search. I'm going to type in content liabilities, but I'm not going to actually finish the word. So I'm not going to type in the Y or the IES because they may have it listed in the annual report under both of those terms. So I just want to search through the annual report and see anywhere that it says content liability or liabilities. And I'm looking for where it actually provides an explanation of those items. And it does here, this is actually pretty early in the annual report. I believe it's before the financial statements and it's just talking about some of the items that Netflix has in their report that are important to the company. So these are contractual obligations that the company is reporting to investors. And here I can see that it talks about the balances in these accounts, but it also tells me what they are. So right here in this paragraph, it tells me that streaming content obligations include amounts related to acquisition, licensing, and production of streaming content. Um, and it goes on to continue to give more detail about what that is, but since I know enough about Netflix, I can understand that this is basically a licensing obligation to stream another 
production company's content. So if they're streaming Disney content, they're going to have to pay Disney something to be able to stream that content. And this is that obligation or liability to do that. So I've used the 10K to find out something I want to know. I wanna go back up to the top of the 10K with you real quick and just show you a couple of other really good uh, sections of the 10K. At the beginning of every 10K, there's what's called a management discussion and analysis and it includes a lot of really valuable information on the company. It includes their risks, it talks about any future business decisions they might be considering. It won't give away any information that's private, but it will tell you a lot about what the company is planning to do. So I really recommend reading through your company's 10K or a company that you're familiar with and looking at that first section of the annual report. It'll also go through some really important performance metrics, and then this is where the management discussion and analysis section comes in on kind of the financial condition and results of operations for the company. So you really can find out an extensive amount of information about the company using their 10K. I recommend you play with either Netflix 10K or another company's 10K just to get a little bit more familiar with it. It is a pretty big document. If you haven't read one start to finish, you're really missing out. Um, I may be kidding on that, but it is a very interesting document if, if you want to read through it a little bit. I want to quickly show you another way to get to this same 10K before we end this video. I'll open up another tab in my web browser and I'm going to search for SEC Edgar. This will pull up the SEC's website where I can search for any company and their 10K or their 10Qs. So if I want Netflix, I can just type in Netflix or I can type in their ticker symbol and I'll just hit search here. This is a more detailed version of what you saw on the company's website here. So again, this is just a little bit prettier to navigate, but this has all the same information. So I could actually enter in the name of the filing type Remember on the company's website, it was just a drop down and I selected annual filings. So if I was going through the SEC website, I would actually need to know the filing name. But the same results come up where it has the 10KA or the amended 10K and then the 10K here. And this is for the most current year. It was filed January 29th, 2019 for the 2018 year. And I can go to the documents or the interactive data. And I'll just go to the form here. This is the HTML version, and again, it just has all the same information as what I had looked at before, where I have the income statement or statement of operations, the cash flow, and balance sheet. So it's the exact same report, it's just a different way of getting to it. If I go back, I can look at some other ways to process the data here from the SEC's website. So if I go to interactive data, It'll take me to where I can look at each section kind of individually, so I can click directly to the balance sheet here, and it gives me this more interactive data or this snapshot of the balance sheet instead of looking at the whole PDF document. I can also look at the Excel version of the financial report. So there's lots of different ways you can process this information, either through the SEC website or through the company's website. Either way, you're going to get the same exact data, so just choose whatever feels the best to you. We will end this video here, and next we'll cover stockholders' equity or shareholders' equity, which you can see right here on the company's balance sheet. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in the next videos.